Tula Junior. Th thank you, thank you, thank you, Speaker. Uh, first, Speaker, to the family of uh, the late Mwai Kibaki, the constituents, the country generally, where he comes from, Nyeri, from Senator Ephraim. Allow me to pass my condolences and that of my wife, Anita, and the people of Makwene on losing such a great man. Mr. Speaker, the young people like myself and others can only repeat sentiments of what we have had. We've not had the opportunity like Senator Wetangula, Senator Maina, Senator Orengo, Senator Ungeri, who had the privilege of working with this good man. Uh, stories are told about this man. And I, I allow me, Mr. Speaker, to recall the sentiments that uh, my late father shared about this good man. He said, this is one man that Kenya will miss. I don't know what he meant then, but uh, watching him lying in this parliament uh, there reminds me that uh, of the words of Solomon, all is vanity. I hope our presidential candidates and the people who want to rule this country can learn some lessons about this good gentleman, Mwai Kibaki. Senator Orengo didn't mention, didn't mention that when he was minister for lands, and after assuming office, the first thing the mandarins of NAC government wanted to do was take away the property of Mzemoy. And this good gentleman, President Kibaki, instructed Senator Orengo to deliver the title deed of Carbonated Gardens to Mzemoy. While he would have taken revenge, and like, while in 2003 he had the power and influence to punish those who were in Kano at the time, Mr. Speaker, President Kibaki did not do so. We want a president who will not revenge. We want a president who will consider every Kenyan, those who voted and who voted for and against him uh, as part of this country. Uh, Mr. Speaker Shakespeare once said, the evil that men do is written in brass, and the good deeds that they, they do are written in water. I'm not sure, Mr. Speaker, that the politicians of this country believe in what Mwai Kibaki believed in. We, are, we, we, are, we don't. Because he left a country that was less corrupt, we are very corrupt. Uh, there is a, actually a picture of something he said, I can't remember it offhand. But there's a very nice picture on the, is it sixth floor or second floor, of Arambe House, about what Kibaki thought about corruption and service to the people. It's, it nearly appears like a contradiction that it appears in that place because a lot of the bad things that have happened to this country, some of them have happened in that building. Mr. Speaker, I remember this president after he left office as a gentleman who I saw every other Sunday at the Consulate Shrine, where I, I go every Sunday, we used to go every Sunday, I used to walk there simply. And Mr. Speaker, I think that the future of this country, and I'm not quite sure whether somebody is going to write a book about this man, I'm not sure whether we will produce a man like this, but Mr. Speaker, a lot of things need to be written about the late Mwai Kibaki. I recall vividly the story about the constitution told by my late father. Mr. Speaker, if it wasn't for Mwai Kibaki remaining firm, a lot of the people, a lot of the people in his government did not want a new constitution. He just remained very firm. And every time they used to conspire, <laughs> there's a word my father used which I will not use here, <laughs> and he sought for his opinion, he said, what the minister has said will follow. And it's through following the advice and what Senator Orengo is saying, listening. I admire this gentleman for his patience and listening. We are quick to judge, we are quick to anger, we are quick to punish our enemies. And Mr. Speaker, since I do not aspire to be a president, those who aspire to be presidents of this republic must borrow a leaf from Waikibaki. 
he led a cabinet of 42. Was it 42? Cabinet ministers. Can you imagine? ODM, wiper then uh, ODM Kenya, and his own party. All these people, Anyang Nyongo, Orengo, Raila, him, and others, were in the same cabinet. The current government is having problems with 20. <laughs> Just 20. He led a government and he found a process and he believed in processes. We are going to miss Kibaki, I tell you. I, I recall a time when I was asked to speak about the BBI, Building Bridges, Building Bridges Initiative. And I, and I said, and I won't, I won't repeat why I said this, and I said, you're going to miss President Mwai Kibaki and what he did for us to get a new constitution. The constitution he promulgated in 2010 is untouched so many years later. Why? Because he believed in processes. And we got a new constitution despite opposition to it because this man believed in processes. I'm saying, if we want to believe in the legacy of one Mwai Kibaki, we must follow process. Those who speak about ill-gotten wealth, I represented two people who were together with my late father who were said at the time to be very close to him. One of them was a central bank governor. Who was his economic advice? When he was alleged to have committed crime when as governor of central bank, he went to him. He told him, uh, Mr. Speaker, that I'm an innocent man. Mikey Bucky told him, go and defend yourself in court. And true to his word, Governor Mulay was found innocent of the crimes for which cabinet ministers in Mwai Kibaki's government conspired to have Governor Mulay removed from office. The second gentleman from Nyeri, who was also his good friend, his name was John Munge. What's your point of order, Senator Iyako? Uh, I hate uh, interrupting my very eloquent future present and future colleague and who will also be your colleague uh, Mr. Speaker in COG. He said that uh, cabinet ministers conspired to have somebody charged. I was in that cabinet and uh, I do not want to say much because I'll steal his thunder. There was no such conspiracy. If it took place it was not at the cabinet level, it was in the kitchen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, the, I, I know the people who wanted Mulay charged. Uh, one time I met one of them who was charged alongside him and I reminded him, you charged Governor Mulay and now you have been charged. Uh, so uh, I, I believe that um, the point is made. The second gentleman is called John Munge, he used to run Chan Munge and Partners a very good old body of uh, Mr. Uh, the President. He was charged uh, on a matter involving Eurobank when he went to his friend and told him he's innocent. He was then the KRA uh, Commissioner General and he told him, please help me. He told him, go and defend yourself in court. Of course, Mr. John Munge was found innocent. He passed on recently, may his soul rest in peace, but it uh, exemplifies what I'm talking about. Uh, if the example of what Kibaki believed in was followed in the current government. A lot of people will either be in jail or in court with corruption. So I believe that as we bury this man, a lot of us are going to make sentiments that we don't believe in. Because Kibaki never protected his friends. Kibaki allowed processes to be followed. And since he was a good parliamentarian, as Senator Omogeni has men mentioned, he allowed parliament to do what it's supposed to do. We must tell our presidential candidates, those who want to become presidents, that you must emulate Mwai Kibaki. 
Don't preach water and drink wine. You must believe in processes. Mwai Kibaki was sued. I remember when he appointed the county commissioner, Mwai Kibaki never lifted a finger. He said, yes, proceed. And I believe the next chief executive of this republic must be able to tell us that he will follow the uh, footsteps of Mwai Kibaki in terms of allowing processes, because that's what this gentleman believed in. I cannot not mention, Mr. Speaker, the question of debt. This man left this country with no debt, or very little debt. And since we are eulogizing him, let's say the things as they are, so that somebody can learn a lesson. Was it because this gentleman, the Makerere student, was a good economist? Did the economist disappear soon after Mwai Kibaki? The answer is no. What he did is that this good gentleman had an economic council, National Economic Council, ECOSOC, that advised him. That is the reason our economy was thriving in his time. That's the reason we borrowed less. And this is really some of the lessons that as we eulogize him, we must, we must call it as it is. This country, I must say, has been mismanaged after Kibaki. I, can, I will say it for the record and for his grandchildren to read. Mwai Kibaki led a peaceful transition. If we don't remember him for anything else, is a gentleman who handed over the sword of leadership in a manner that left this country in one piece. When I say so, I am speaking to the current president. This man was your mentor lying in parliament. You must leave Kenya in peace when you hand over power. Because there will be no other president. I, I believe that President Uhuru Kenyatta is going to do the right thing, as his predecessor did. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, let me end there and say that uh, it's unfortunate that the country has lost all other presidents who have left us. Uh, it would have been nice, and I have suggested that in future, any president who leaves office must form sort of an elders' council where they can guide their uh, successors on matters management of the country. A time will come when we'll have five uh, retired presidents or six or seven. We can't just let them go into their retirement. They should be find an opportunity to guide like it happens in America. Uh, and therefore, Mr. Speaker, as we eulogize this good gentleman, I pray that this country will have a peaceful election. Those like uh, Senator Rodangula, who has said and spoken about my party leader, who deputized successfully the uh, uh, Mwai Kibaki, must remind that our Dr. Stephen Kalonzo, our party leader, is like Job. You know? The man is just going through trials. This is just trials. And the good Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, the peaceful man, is quiet. It's not because he doesn't know what to do or what to say. It's not because we don't know what to do or what to say. We are peaceful people. We, were, we are watching. All of you. That doesn't mean you take advantage of him or us. And, and uh, nobody is going to marry us by force. No, 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 no. We are going to do everything. We are going to do everything. Those who sit with him and those who advise him, we are going to do it everything, do we, doing it willingly. Willingly, because this country is bigger than all of us. I think at some point everybody must must think about the country 
more than we love ourselves. Uh, so we have taken your advice, and as, as usual, we are going to take notes. Those who, uh, we are taking notes. Those of you who are inviting us, we are taking notes. We are watching you. I, I don't think you are just going to invite us and we walk, walk in there like we are jilted. We are not. Thank you. Senator uh, <laughs> Christopher Langat. <laughs> <laughs>